In today's cartoon story joke, we're about to embark on a comedic odyssey that'll have you snorting laughter harder than a car backfiring on a first date. So, put down that papyrus scroll, because seriously, who even uses those anymore? And get ready for a story that's funnier than a clown car full of monkeys juggling bowling pins. Let's face it, most car histories are about as exciting as watching paint dry. Numbers get tossed around like confetti at a clown convention. Design choices are dissected with all the enthusiasm of a sloth reviewing salad options, and you're left feeling like you need a nap and a double shot of espresso. Not necessarily in that order. But the history of cars? Hold on to your hubcaps, gearheads, because this is a joyride packed with more twists, turns, and flamboyant characters than a soap opera fueled by nitrous oxide. Act 1. From Horseless Carriages to Horseless Headaches, The Early Days. The story begins not with sleek, shiny automobiles, but with glorified horseless carriages that were about as reliable as a toddler with a glue stick. Imagine these contraptions sputtering down dirt roads, spewing black smoke like a particularly grumpy dragon, and sounding like a herd of kazoos with a grudge. These early cars were about as aerodynamic as a brick and about as user-friendly as a medieval torture device, if you managed to get one started without throwing a wrench in frustration or more likely at the car itself. Congratulations. You were basically a pioneer of the automotive rodeo. Then there was the second act, the assembly line shenanigans and the rise of the Tin Lizzie, the early 1900s. Then came Henry Ford with his genius idea, the assembly line. This revolutionized car production, making cars affordable for the average Joe, or Josephine, as the case may be. The problem? The assembly line also led to a hilarious era of uniformity. Imagine a world where every car looked exactly the same, like a million Model T Fords in various shades of, well, black. Because as Henry famously said, you can have any color you like as long as it's black. The fashion sense of the automotive world was about as exciting as a beige sock convention at that point. Now came Act 3, the gangster getaway cars and the chrome-covered calamities, the Roaring Twenties. The 1920s roared onto the scene with flappers, jazz music, and of course gangsters with getaway cars that were about as subtle as a disco ball in a library. These vehicles were loud, flashy, and often about as aerodynamic as a bathtub. Imagine Clyde Barrow and Bonnie Parker screeching around corners in a car that looked like it was dipped in chrome and sprinkled with diamonds, because subtlety was clearly not their strong suit. It was a time of outrageous car design, fueled by gangsters, bootleggers, and a whole lot of questionable taste. Then came Act 4, the oil crisis, the disco ball on wheels, and the rise of the Japanese invasion. 1970s, 1980s. The 70s were a time of fuel shortages and a desperate need for a change. Cars shrunk down to the size of overgrown hamsters and fuel efficiency became the new cool. But let's not forget the disco era, where cars became rolling disco balls on wheels with enough vinyl and shag carpet to make Austin Powers jealous. Imagine cruising down the street in a car that resembled a small nightclub complete with flashing lights and a questionable sound system that wheezed out your favorite disco tunies. It was a time of questionable taste, to be sure, but hey, at least you could party on the go. Enter the Japanese. These automotive ninjas swooped in with fuel-efficient, reliable cars that offered a surprising amount of zoom for their buck. Suddenly, American manufacturers were scrambling to keep up, leading to a hilarious period of Me Too design choices and questionable quality control. Remember those American cars that looked like melted marshmallows with questionable chrome accents? Yeah, those were a product of this era. Basically, American car design went from bold and brash to confused and plasticky in the blink of an oil crisis. All right, folks, ditch the dusty old history books. Let's buckle up, shift gears, and launch ourselves into the joke faster than a politician changes their stance on a Tuesday. So, there was this college student, let's call him John, who drove the automotive equivalent of a dust bunny, the oldest, most beat-up beetle in existence. 
One day, John pulled off a miracle. He landed a date with the most beautiful girl in his grade. Let's call her Veronica. John was ecstatic, but his joy quickly sputtered out like his car engine. There was one major problem. There was no way he could roll up to Veronica's house in that jalopy. Desperate, John resorted to the ultimate broke college student move. He begged his dad for the keys to his brand new Volvo X30. Now, this Volvo wasn't just any car. It was his dad's prized possession, cherished more than John's existence, probably. John approached his dad with a sheepish grin. Dad, he pleaded, can I borrow your car for tonight? It's a super important date, and I can't exactly impress Veronica with the Flintstones mobile. John's dad, clearly conflicted, sighed. Son, he said, you know that Volvo is basically my baby. If you even put a single scratch on it, you'll be living on ramen noodles for the next decade. But fine, go impress your princess. The date went flawlessly. The food was amazing, Veronica was stunning, and miraculously, the Volvo remained pristine. John, feeling like Casanova himself, walked Veronica back to her house. As they said their goodbyes, John noticed a massive dent on the Volvo's gleaming side, right where his dad always parked his lawn gnome. Panic surged through him. He rushed Veronica into her house, apologized profusely, and then hightailed it to his friend's garage, where they spent the entire night meticulously repairing the dent. Exhausted but triumphant, John finally crawled into bed. The next morning, John awoke to his dad's enthusiastic singing, a war crime usually reserved for weekends. He dragged himself downstairs, his heart sinking at the sight of his dad cheerfully inspecting the Volvo. John braced himself for the wrath of a thousand sons. But his mom interrupted his thoughts. John, honey, what's wrong? To his utter bewilderment, his dad's face broke into a wide grin. The dad answered, I am so confused. You know the spot where we accidentally bumped the car yesterday? It's not here anymore. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here. <laughs>